Okay, so this revision video is on co-transport and active transport. So there's just one revision task here. I've provided some statements below. You just need to match them to co-transport or active transport. And just to note, some statements do match to both. So pick the ones that you think match to the correct form of transport, and then we'll go through answers. Okay. So let's begin with co-transport. So I've got a diagram here. So if we just go through this, we've got a co-transport protein or symporter. What happens is one molecule that's moving down its concentration gradient will bind. A second molecule will hitch a ride. It will also have a binding site on there, but it's moving against its concentration gradient. When they bind, that causes a change in shape of the co-transport protein or symporter, and so those molecules can move to the other side of the membrane. And when they are removed, then the symporter will change back shape, and it can continue to do that process. So your answer should be this, these. So note that it's specific. It will only transport a certain type of molecule, so for instance, the sodium glucose transporter in the membrane of epithelial cells of the ileum will only bind sodium ions and glucose molecules. Um, the sodium amino acid co-transporter in epithelial cells of the ileum will only bind sodium ions and amino acids, so they're specific. They bind two molecules at a time, obviously. And the key thing is they're moving one molecule down its concentration gradient, another against its concentration gradient. And the shape changes when those molecules bind to allow those molecules to move to the other side of the membrane. So active transport, let's go to that next. So active transport, let's just talk through this. So for active transport, you need a carrier protein that's specific for a type of molecule, so of a binding site to which a specific molecule fits. So it'll bind. The thing about active transport is it is an active process, so it requires ATP. That's produced in the mitochondria from aerobic respiration. And ATP can be hydrolyzed, and the inorganic phosphate attaches to that protein, that carrier protein. That causes it to change shape and that means that that molecule that it's transporting can move to the other side of the membrane. That inorganic phosphate then becomes detached and it can return to the mitochondria where ATP will be reformed in aerobic respiration and as a consequence of that inorganic phosphate detaching the carrier protein then changes its shape back to face the other side and that process can repeat. So here are the uh, terms you should have um, had for active transport. So the key thing is it's moving one type of molecule from low to high concentration against the concentration gradient. And it's using ATP to do that, an active process. Okay, so that's the revision video on co-transport and active transport.